This guide relies on the fact that you already know the basics to having an efficient factory design. To learn more about that, watch my first video. It's just two minutes long and the link is on the top right. In this guide, I'll be showing you the different conversions for all items available in tiers one and two. I'll also be sharing some information I've gathered while playing the game. The different items include, but are not limited to, iron rods, iron plates, screws, reinforced iron plates, rotors, smart plating, wires, cables, copper sheets, concrete, and solid biofuel. Quick note, I'll be keeping basic info up here. This will include whatever item is being made, the total production capacity of the shown design in parts per minute, and the initial input rate for the design along with the specific item. Also, I'll have numbers representing the required input for a machine in red and the output produced in white. Now then, screws. Here we have four rod constructors going into six screw constructors. Rod constructors require 15 ingots per minute, so if you come around to the back, whoa. Excuse me, kind sir. As you can see, we need 15 times 4, which is 60 ingots. The 60 ingots will be divided by 2 and then divided by 2 again to give 15 for each constructor. The output of two constructors, which is 15, is merged together to make 30, and then split three ways for each constructor so as to get 10 per minute, and 10 is the required rate for screw constructors. But what if you're short on space? Now that's more like it. Looks neat, right? Let me show you the construction. Okay, I want to try to make this sound as much as a cookery show as I can. First off, place a merger as close as you can to the constructor like so. Make sure the output is facing you. Now don't worry, there's space for the conveyor. Like so. And now repeat the other thing on the opposite side, making sure the output is facing inwards. Now we're going to keep another merger snug right in between them. The output should be facing you again. Connect. Now we're going to make a lift without any extension and face it inwards. Get on top of this merger and then place something right there. It doesn't really matter. Now put a splitter with the input coming from the lift. Now get rid of the bottom one and place a conveyor to connect. Nice. Let's do the math so far. Two 15s are combined to make 30 and then those two are combined to make 60 here. The lift takes 60 into the splitter. Now for the screw constructors. Align them with the second rod constructor and keep them on the edge of the red zone. And then one, two. Now place two more constructors on the left. Come to the constructor in the center and place a lift facing you. Now place a splitter into the lift with the central output going into the lift and make sure it's placed exactly like this. That way you don't need to use a conveyor to connect them. Connect it to the main splitter and place two lifts on both sides and then connect them to their respective constructor. And repeat this on the other side for the next three constructors. Once the construction is complete, the main splitter splits 60 into 30 to both sides which is then split three ways to each constructor, which is 10 rods per minute. This setup produces 240 screws per minute, but let's be real, that's not going to be enough. So what we can do is wall this off and put a ceiling over it to get a floor, and then build the exact same thing on top of that. So our output will become the double of 240, which is 480. However, you will need a 120 ingots per minute feed in order to split two ways for both floors. If you have an issue where the foundation isn't outside the clearance, Instead of building another wall and making it unnecessarily tall, just build out, place the 8x1 foundation and then another 8x1 on top of that. Extend from that foundation and you should be fine. Also, did you know you can clip stackable conveyor poles into the walls like this? And you can use this as a ladder to get between floors. Quick announcement, I will be uploading Outer Wilds playthrough with commentary and the Forest co-op gameplay with Killer73. If you want to see me be scared shitless, then subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of that. It'll be out in a few days. Please subscribe. Please. It's the whole reason I make YouTube videos, so could you? Please? No? Okay, I'll go fuck. For concrete, the main issue is the input rate is 45 per minute and the output is 15 per minute, which limits the speed at which you can get the concrete. But if you can manage an input of 120 per minute, then it can be split as shown. Note, the third constructor will have to be underclocked to 67%. That way the input rate is reduced 30 per minute. If you can't get 120 ores per minute, spam miners at the ore source and load it into the storage unit yourself. Try to get the resources quickly and get past the first two tiers. Then you can unlock the Mark II miner, which will help you out a lot. Copper wires need 15 copper ingots per minute. So split the incoming 30 between two constructors. If you only want wires, remove the cable constructor. 
For cable, you need 60 wires per minute. Wires are produced at 30 per minute, so combine them to get 60. This design can be repeated as desired. To get copper sheets, you need 20 ingots per minute. Place two smelters to get 60 ingots per minute and then split it three ways to get 20. Repeat if necessary. This is for reinforced plates. RIP assemblers need 30 plates and 60 screws per minute. For the screw setup, use my setup again, but this time we only need half of it. This screw setup produces 120 screws per minute, so we just need to split it between two assemblers. Now for the plate constructors. Build a roof over the screw constructors and build three constructors on top in line with the constructor on the bottom. Place a merger on the central constructor and connect with the rest. Then place two splitters on top, remove the middle one and connect the lift to it. Now do the exact same thing on the screw side. Do note that I made a mistake here. I placed a Mark 1 lift here when it should have been a Mark 2. Make sure you change that when you're building. Now place an assembler in such a way that the lifts are aligned. And then extend the next lift up. Repeat on the other side for the second assembler and then connect everything up. For rotors, rotor assemblers need 20 rods and 100 screws per minute. We're going to build two assemblers. First, build the same screw setup as before. Now remove one of the screw constructors but keep its rod feet as we will need that 10 rods per minute later. Build a roof over it and then build two rod constructors on top. Now build a merger in front of each constructor and then bring the other rod feet up using a lift and split it into 5 and 5. Connect each 5 to each merger to get the required 20 rods per minute. Coming back to the screw setup, place a divider on the central constructor and mergers on either side with the output facing you. Then connect the constructor and divider to the merger. The divider is splitting the 40 screws per minute output of the central constructor and sharing it between the two other mergers. The other mergers combine with the output rates of the two constructors they are connected with to give a total output of 100 screws per minute. Build two assemblers and join. Remember to use a Mark II conveyor belt here as the combined output of 100 screws per minute exceed the carrying capacity of the Mark I conveyor. Then disconnect the other rod mergers and you're done. As for solid biofuel and smart plating, I recommend not making any fully automated setups. Just have a few constructors for solid biofuel and some assemblers for smart plating on standby somewhere. The reason I say this is because for solid biofuel, once you unlock coal, which will be soon by the way, you won't really need it much. And as for smart plating, you only need 50 to advance to the next year.